Nobody writes combat better than R.A. Salvatore, period. But that's not the main reason why you should read this trilogy. Let's drink about it. Hey everyone, welcome to The Book and the Drink, where today we're going to be discussing a series that is near and dear to me, the Dark Elf Trilogy. This, along with the Dragonlance novels from Weiss and Hickman, really helped to propel me into the world of fantasy novels, RPGs, and games. The Dark Elf Trilogy is a series of three books, as the name suggests, called Homeland, Exile, and Sojourn. And when I read them in the 90s, there were three separate books, and you could still find them that way, but most commonly in bookstores these days, you'll find them in this collector's edition single volume. The books are about Dritz de Orden, everyone's favorite dark elf ranger, and it's really more of an origin story as we find him in the Underdark in a society which really looks down upon him, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. And it's really his humble beginnings as we see him get on a path to become what he becomes. Salvatore had a tall order when he was putting together these books and thinking about it now in retrospect, there were a number of challenges and hurdles that he had to overcome in order to make these books great. Just one of the considerations that Salvatore had to make when writing these books was that he had to keep it in the Forgotten Realm setting, which was already established with previous books and modules and they were working on a campaign setting. So it had to be congruent with all of these things in order for it to all jive together. In addition, he had to work within the guidelines and rules set out by Dungeons and Dragons in these books here in terms of how his magic system work, how his spells aesthetics were, how magical items behaved, and what races and classes were to be attributed within his books. They all had to correspond and work in conjunction with what's outlined in these books. Let's see, what else? Oh yeah, build a city that is completely underground and is pretty much isolated from any other society. Oh, by the way, the inhabitants are all evil, but somehow that society has to work and it's pitch black. That's right, no light whatsoever and make it interesting. Good luck. So obviously he did a phenomenal job at all of these things. Otherwise we wouldn't be talking about this and this wouldn't be one of the most popular trilogies of all time when it comes to fantasy. So let's talk about the city and the society for just a minute because it's really, really interesting and it's one of my favorite aspects of this trilogy. The city is completely underground one, which means that women hold all the positions of power, have all the influence, and men are kind of second-class citizens, kind of opposite of how it is in many places in our world still, unfortunately. And of course, our main character, Dritz Dorton, is a male, and part of the struggle that he has is trying to be a male, making it in a female-led society. In addition, the other brilliant piece that Salvatore introduces into this drow society, drow, by the way, another word for dark elf, is this idea of ranked houses. There is a series of ranked houses, and they're always jockeying and vying and influencing to get their positions lifted within the society. Usually, no, always by underhanded means, if not criminal means, if not murder, or just all out assault and mass murder on another house to take their position. Woo, it's a lot. It's so much fun to read about the society and the underhanded deals and the backstabbing and the murdering and everything else. And it's fun to watch our character whose moral compass doesn't really fall in line with everything else that's going on within the society, try to kind of make his way through and try to be a powerful person, but everything is basically stacked against him. Fun fact, Salvatore came up with the matriarchal system of having women who are evil in charge of houses and who have influence and rule the society because he grew up with five sisters. Now, I don't know what that says about his sisters and his household. Uh, those are his words, not mine, but I'm sure everything was fine, but it's just something that I wanted to bring up because I found it hilarious. It's so much fun to read about the society and the politics in this book and the world building is exceptional, but equally fun is the combat scenes that Salvatore has put together. And we'll talk about that in just a minute, but first I wanted to talk about this drink, which is quite delicious. And this is the first time I'm having it. It's called a Black Manhattan. 
And I wanted something that was in line with the theme of our book. We're talking about dark elves and the underdark. And I wanted something dark and mysterious to drink as well. And I'm loving it. This is delicious. And I'll show you how to make it at the end of the video after we talk about the book. So Dritz de Orden, our dark elf ranger protagonist here, his fighting style using two scimitars, two curved blades, dual wielding them, meaning one in each hand at the same time, really, really sets up Salvatore to be able to do some very exciting, cool combat with him. Now, if that wasn't enough, a ranger who dual wields scimitars in the subsequent books, yes, there are more books after this trilogy, a lot more. There is the Icewind Dale trilogy that follows it, which is three books, obviously. And then Legacy of the Drow, which is four books. And then it goes on from there. But in these books, another character is introduced by the name of Artemis Entreri, who is the antagonist or arch rival, if you will, of Dritz de Orden. And Artemis also fights with two weapons. He dual wields a sword and a dagger. And when these two go at it with four blades flying, there is a melee dance that is so fun to read about. And Salvatore does just a brilliant job of putting you in the action, showing you the chaos that is fighting with four blades. And then he introduces kicks and punches and a little bit of magic. And it just becomes so entertaining to read about. Just stop watching the video and go to the store and pick up this book. Actually, no, finish the video, then go to the store and pick up this book or go down below. I have a link. You can buy it there and five star it because you are going to five star it. This is a great trilogy to read and I know you're going to like it, but there are other benefits to reading this trilogy than just enjoying the books alone. If you ever end up playing Dungeons and Dragons, Dritz and his companion and the city of Menzo Baranzan are featured in many modules. If you're a video gamer, he does appear in Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 and Neverwinter Nights and several other games, including probably Baldur's Gate 3, which is coming out later this year. Cross your fingers. Now let's go make our Black Manhattan, which is very simple to make, it turns out, and quite delicious. All right, let's make our drink. It's actually quite easy, though it does require a specific liqueur that you may not have on hand called Averna, which is an herbal bitter liqueur that is very dark in flavor, which gives us the color that we want to go along with our book. The drink was invented by Todd Smith in San Francisco, which is just a couple hours from here at a place called Bourbon and Branch. And it does include rye whiskey as one of the ingredients. And you may not have this on your shelf as it's not as common as some of the other whiskeys. You can substitute bourbon instead if you want. It would impart a sweeter kind of flavor, whereas rye whiskey is a little bit more dry. Each of those would complement the drink just fine. But in this case, I do prefer the rye whiskey. So we're going to need two ounces of the rye whiskey. And everything is going to go into a container with ice. And then we'll need one ounce of Averna and that's going to go right in as well. Next, we're going to need two bitters, both the aromatic bitters. Um, some people just call this Angostura bitters and orange bitters. And these two bitters, by the way, if you're going to have a bar at home, are two that you should keep stocked as there's so many drinks that involve both of these. We're going to need a dash of each. First, let's go with the regular aromatic bitters or Angostura bitters. Just a dash. And then we'll go with the orange bitters. I can open it. There we are. And then we're just going to stir this up. This is one of those drinks that is stirred, not shaken. And we're really just chilling and mixing here. That should be just fine and then just pour into your glass. And to garnish, we're gonna use a dark cherry. De-stem it. All right, let's, let's give this a try. Mm. There's definitely an herbaceous quality going on there, 
but it's balanced out very well by the bitters, both in the Averna and the two different bitters that we put in. You can definitely taste the orange bitter aroma coming through. And then the rye whiskey really puts that kind of weedy, dry flavor into it. And overall, I think it's a delicious drink and maybe something that I would have perhaps after dinner. Okay, I hope you enjoyed our discussion about the Dark Elf Trilogy, one of my favorite fantasies, and this drink. I hope you go out and make it. It's really fantastic. If you have any friends or family members who also enjoy reading and drinking as much as I do, send them over to the channel. I would appreciate it. And subscribe and like, and I will see you next time. Cheers.